Disney princess film history, Beauty and the Beast, Belle. After the success of The Little Mermaid in 1989, the legendary Disney animation department had begun a new age of animated films. This is often known as the Disney Renaissance, and many of its animators, many of which were in their 20s and 30s, had been trained directly by the nine old men before they retired. These men who had worked together on classics such as Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty. Therefore, the new generation of Disney animators were equipped with the knowledge and passion of past films and artwork, restoring Disney to the top of its game. The next fairy tale Disney would recreate would be Beauty and the Beast. In this video, we'll be focusing on the character of Belle and how her film was a legend in its own right. It is thought by some scholars that the Beauty and the Beast story may have its root in the tale of Cupid and Psyche, the ancient chronicle from the ancient Roman novel Metamorphosis. This myth, written in the 2nd century CE by Apuleius, is one of the oldest tales and many believe it to be the first ever literary fairy tale. The tale starts with Psyche's banishment by the jealous Venus to a mountaintop in order to be wed to a murderous beast. Cupid is sent to destroy her, but instead falls in love and flies her away to his castle. There she is directed to never seek the face of her husband. Eventually, Psyche succumbs to her curiosity, but accidentally scars her husband with a candle. In attempted atonement, Psyche offers herself as a slave to Venus and completes a set of impossible tasks. Completing the last task, seeking beauty from the queen of the underworld, Psyche opens the beauty in the box and at once falls into a coma. Overcome with grief, Cupid rescues her. He begs Jupiter that she may become immortal so that the two could be forever united. The original story of Beauty and the Beast was written by Gabrielle Suzanne de Villeneuve in 18th century France. Villeneuve's La Belle et la Bête was an original piece of storytelling. However, it was Jeanne-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont's version of the tale Disney took inspiration from to make it into a film. Beaumont simplified the tale to transform it into a quintessential fairy tale. This tale was first published in 1756 and changes Beaumont made to Villeneuve's tale tell another story too, reflecting the social concerns and political changes happening in France at the time. Myths and stories have travelled far and wide from generation to generation and we find similarities in these tales from all corners of the world. The woman who married a snake closely reflects Cupid and Psyche, yet this first appeared in the Indian Panchatantra, a collection known to have existed in oral form well before it appeared in print in 500 AD. Walt Disney first attempted to adapt the story himself, but ran into story problems, particularly because the main action consisted of a girl coming down to dinner every night and rejecting the Beast's proposals every time, which was boring to transfer to screen. It was shelved in the 1950s. Originally, the film was never meant to be a musical and was the first Disney animated film to use a screenplay written by Linda Wolverton. She was also the first woman to write an animated screenplay. However, she was not used to the animation process of storyboards and Wolverton clashed with the artistic team over the use of her script on how it would work visually. The film was said to be birthed by fire. A big meeting was called and after that, Wolverton and the animators worked closely together. The first 20 minutes of the non-musical film revealing Belle's family had to be cut as Disney CEO Jeffrey Katzenberg realised that the film would do better as a musical after the success of The Little Mermaid. Directors were changed, but one year had already been lost working on the old version of the story, and the remaining time of two years meant time constraints were felt by all who worked on the project, putting in extra hours and coming in on Sundays to try and complete the project on time. Animators also went on trips to Europe to draw references of French chateaus and castles. Howard Ashman and Alan Menken, lyricist and composer for The Little Mermaid, were brought on to work Beauty and Beast into a Broadway-style musical. Ashman was asked to take over the film, but at the time he learned that he was dying from AIDS-related complications, and pre-production of the film was moved closer to his New York City home to accommodate his failing health. Howard Ashman very much shaped the project in his vision, including his idea to create a tragic hero of the beast and the inclusion of a prologue to explain the origin of the curse. He wanted to show redemption from a mistake the beast made a long time ago. He also came up with the idea of having the household staff become enchanted objects and was specific with casting ideas. 
The cast of Beauty and the Beast were Broadway performers and Ashman directed them to perform the song numbers as though they were on stage. The songs were mostly recorded live with the orchestra and the voice cast performed simultaneously in order to give the songs a cast album-like energy. Disney had originally considered casting Jodie Benson from The Little Mermaid as Belle. They eventually decided upon Broadway actress and singer Paige O'Hara in favour of having a heroine who sounded more like a woman than a girl. According to co-director Kirk Wise, O'Hara was given the role because she had a unique quality, a tone that made her special, reminiscent to that of American actress and singer Judy Garland. In their effort to enhance the character from the original story, the filmmakers felt that Belle should be unaware of her own beauty and made her a little odd. James Baxter and Mark Henn served as the supervising animators for Belle. Mark Henn said Belle was a new style of princess, proactive, more involved in the story, intelligent, holding her own. Belle and the Beast dance through a computer-generated ballroom as the camera dollies around them in simulated 3D space. The filmmakers had originally decided against the use of computers in favour of traditional animation, but later, when the technology had improved, decided it could be used for the one scene in the ballroom. The success of the ballroom sequence helped convince studio executives to further invest in computer animation. No one had a clue how ill Howard Ashman really was. He was so energetic all the time he was working on Beauty and the Beast. It is said that he wrote some of the most beautiful music in the last months of his life. Along with Walt Disney, he was like a guardian angel. Before Ashman's death, members of the film's production team visited him after the film's well-received first screening. He was told how important his contribution had been. Producer Don Hahn told him that the film would be a great success, who'd have thought it? To which Ashman replied with, I would. Four days later, he died in hospital at the age of 40, on March 14, 1991. He never saw the finished film. A tribute is included at the end of the credits crawl to our friend Howard, who gave her mermaid her voice and a beast his soul. We will be forever grateful. For the first time for the Walt Disney Company, they entered the film unfinished for the New York Film Festival, 70% complete. Audiences were shown the hand-drawn pencil tests and ink and paint. People broke into applause after the first song like it was a live performance. At the end of the screening, Beauty and the Beast received a 10 minute long standing ovation from the film festival audience. The finished film premiered at the El Capitan Theatre in Hollywood on November 13th, 1991, beginning a limited release before expanding wide on November 22nd. The film ranked as the third most successful film of 1991 in North America, surpassed only by the summer blockbusters Terminator 2 and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. At the time, Beauty and the Beast was the most successful animated Disney film release. Janet Maslin of the New York Times gave the film a positive review, saying, It is a surprise in a time of sequels and retreads that the new film is so fresh and altogether triumphant in its own right. Beauty and the Beast is set in 18th century pre-revolutionary France. Belle's golden ball gown is not from this time period. Wide dresses had volume coming from the hips. Belle's ball gown shape is more 19th century. Mostly the fashion was European influenced rather than inspiration from a set time period. So Belle's yellow ball gown was inspired by a similar costume Hepburn wore in the film Roman Holiday. Belle's peasant dress may have been inspired by Judy Garland's in The Wizard of Oz and Julie Andrews' dress in The Sound of Music. Art director Brian McKenty suggested that Belle be the only character in her village to wear blue in order to emphasise the fact that she is different and an outcast. The film grossed $425 million at the box office worldwide on a $25 million budget and was met with widespread critical acclaim towards its romantic narrative, animation, particularly the ballroom scene, characters and musical numbers. Beauty and the Beast won the Golden Globe Award for Best Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy, the first animated film to ever win that category. It also became the first animated film to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture at the 64th Academy Awards, where it won the Academy Award for Best Original Score and Best Original Song. In April 1994, Beauty and the Beast became Disney's first animated film to be adapted into a Broadway musical. The success of the film spawned three director video follow-ups. The final dance between Belle and the Prince was reused from the final dance sequence between Princess Aurora and Prince Philip from the 1959 film Sleeping Beauty. This was done because production of the film was near the deadline. 
Warburton is said to base Belle on Catherine Hepburn's role of Jo March from the film adaptation of the book Little Women. A pop version of the Beauty and the Beast theme performed by Celine Dion and Peebo Bryson over the end credits was released as a commercial single from the film soundtrack supported with a music video. The pop version of Beauty and the Beast became an international hit and performed considerably well on charts around the world. The song sold over a million copies worldwide. This version of the song was also nominated for Record of the Year and Song of the Year at the Grammys, and it won the Grammy for Dion and Bryson for Best Pop Duo Group Vocal Performance. Belle also frequently appears for meet and greets, both in her blue and gold dresses, in all the Disney parks around the world, and on the Disney Cruise Line. In Disneyland, Belle is prominently featured in Paint the Night Parade as part of a princess-themed float. At Disney World, in Beauty and the Beast Live at Disney Hollywood Studios, Belle appears and plays out the same role as in the film. Belle can also be found in Fantasmic during the princess-themed medley. In conclusion, the audience and critic reaction to Beauty and the Beast complemented the animators and crew, people who don't normally get the limelight. It made it okay for adults to see animated films without children and cemented Disney as a force to be reckoned with, a tipping point for animation. The film connected with people on an emotional level with its sophistication and maturity. After Beauty and the Beast, the company looked forward by splitting the animation team in two so they could work on two films at the same time. Their next film release would be an even bigger hit, Aladdin, which stars Princess Jasmine. My focus for the next video in this series. Is Belle your favourite Disney princess? Was there anything new you learned about her film? Please like, comment, share and subscribe for more Disney content. Thank you for watching.